All right, so here's the brief agenda, um, the introduction, which I just went through. Uh, in, a, in a few seconds, I'm gonna go uh, through our, our update from the data and machine learning team about search, and then we'll do the Q&A session. Okay, so let's just hop into it. All right. Um, so the data team at Meetup. So uh, a little bit about me. I just described uh, my role uh, previously. Previous to this, um, I was a researcher in neuroscience. I got my PhD in systems and computational neuroscience at uh, New York University, uh, and then I continued that with postdoctoral research at Johns Hopkins University and the Mind Brain Institute. And I spent a little bit of time building brains uh, as a research scientist for robots uh, at um, Brain Corporation in San Diego. Um, the data team itself um, consists of four uh, major functional areas. There are data science, business intelligence, data engineering, and machine learning engineering. And uh, I guess the main point of this is that th these are uh, a lot of the experience the expertise that um, the team the team brings to the table but no one on the team is siloed in any of these functions we overlap a lot in the work we do so here's our team um, angie matt michelle rox and neil yogita rohan tarun eugene and me um, and the work i'm about to talk about uh, for search is definitely done by this team but also uh, in conjunction with our product and engineering teams that meet up now, what does the data team do? So the data team contributes to the business in two major ways uh, with analytics, which we'll call data-driven decision-making that consists of data modeling, which is transforming raw data into something more usable downstream. Uh, an analyses and insights uh, are business intelligence tooling, which uh, provides some data democracy across the company so that everybody has the ability to answer questions with our data make informed decisions and then experimentation so uh, uh, the team helps um, run a b testing um, and then we have operational systems and you can think of these as data powered products and some of these are our personalization products so you can think of those as like event recommendations uh, search which i'll talk about uh, in a few minutes and then our experimentation engine which helps us run those a b tests among other things Okay, so uh, the evolution of search at Meetup. So I'll, I'll get right into it. Um, here's an overview of, of how I'm gonna approach this discussion. First, why work on search? Um, then what's wrong with the current search experience that we provide? And then I'll go through the, uh, a few ways that we've been improving on that search experience. That includes modernizing our search infrastructure, um, trying to use more information about understanding uh, what what the intent is behind a search and use that to uh, provide a better search experience. Some of our work around internationalization um, and then some, some so those are the things that we've accomplished um, and then some of the upcoming improvements that we're working on today. Okay, so first, why even care about search? Um, so search obviously is a way that we match the customer's interest um, with the organizers supply of meetup events on the platform. And this is really core to uh, matching those two sides. So what are members looking for? And what are our, what are our organizers and event hosts providing? Um, and so search is that the primary tool for accomplishing this, especially when the user, the member, really knows what they're after, right? Um, and users kind of, you know, people use search all over the place. That, we all just expect search to just work. Okay, so what's what's wrong with search today at Meetup? So the current search experience just doesn't work. Um, about 10% of users use current search. That's not very many. Um, I think you'll find uh, other platforms um, allow, you know, have a lot more users uh, engaging with the search functionality. Uh, our users kind of learn over time that the search experience doesn't serve, serve a lot of their needs. Um, and so they'll, you know, kick out to uh, using uh, Google or something else that really doesn't match um, 
their needs as either. Uh, only about 8% of searchers end up RSVPing to an event from a search. That's not very great. Um, and what I just uh, said before is that users often rely on external search engines, uh, which limits uh, their usability. So it doesn't have you know, the sort of uh, filtering and, and search capabilities you'd expect. Um, at Meetup, we want uh, to help users find events and groups that are of interest to them as quickly as we can. And in doing so, we want to create that positive impression of Meetup and the quality of the, the, the events and groups that are on Meetup, right? And so search is a huge, huge part of this. OK. So to get a little bit, uh, give a little bit more of an example of when search uh, is providing a poor experience. So uh, let's say you're looking for the New York Tech Meetup. And the New York te Tech Meetup group is uh, a huge uh, group. Um, I think it's the largest tech group in New York, um, if not the world. I don't know, 62,000 members, you can see. Um, when you type in the group's exact name in, in, the, in the current experience, that we're trying to replace, um, that group doesn't even show up in the top results, right? That's, that's not great. And when you kind of click on that calendar button and you look for events, uh, it doesn't find any events, and which is a little bit surprising, right? Because uh, there's an event next week and, and that really should come to the top of the lip, list. Furthermore, um, it's, it's just kind of confusing. So it needs an update. All right, so uh, you know, before I dig into how we're improving search, I wanna convince you that search isn't really an easy problem to, sol to solve. Um, if it was, we wouldn't have uh, gigantic companies like Google around, right? Um, so search is used across the industry uh, for a lot of different use cases, uh, such as finding websites on Google, uh, finding products on Amazon, but for our purposes, uh, when a searcher uh, enters a search term, uh, we want our search engine to, to take that and return a set of events that we hope is really relevant to what the, the searcher is looking for. Um, sounds simple, but it's not really that simple, right? Um, how does this, this machinery interpret the user query to identify the intent, right? And then how does that match against our event supply? And then how do we rank results according to how relevant we think it is to that search term? And search is also a challenging data problem. Um, so uh, we have very little input from users. So in this example on the left, you can see in that search box is the term ball. Now our job is to take that term and, and return the events that are most relevant, but there's a lot of guesswork involved. Like uh, in, in this case, does ball mean, you know, sports equipment, uh, baseball, basketball, or does it mean a style of dance? You know, how do we get there? Um, so I'm gonna discuss this solutions to this particular problem in a little bit, but first uh, I'm gonna talk briefly about uh, the search infrastructure. So, um, uh, for a historical perspective, uh, Meetup is an 18-year-old company. Um, the current search infrastructure, I think, predates nearly every, if not every, engineer currently at Meetup. Um, given that dust, we've completely rebuilt the search infrastructure um, using modern solutions. Um, in this case, we're using Elasticsearch, which is a very well-known uh, search database. And already this relatively bare-bones stack and algorithm uh, has led to some really big usability wins, um, increasing in uh, some A-B testing that we've run, uh, RCPs from searches by over 10%, which is really a big win given that this was just the very first step. So now I'm gonna talk about some other recent improvements. So the first is um, uh, using this new search uh, to, to improve the search experience for non-English languages. So uh, the, initial, um, the initial improvements were really geared toward English-speaking uh, English users, um, and uh, we know that about 20% of search queries come from non-English locales and languages. 
So uh, we, you know, we we decided to test the ability of this new search uh, uh, mechanism and infrastructure to serve um, those non-English languages and locales. And the results we saw were extremely promising. So uh, for, the, for the top most used langu languages, um, we saw a, a significant lift in engagement. Um, so you can see these lift numbers are, are pretty astounding. Um, and we saw improvements, uh, we saw, so these were significant uh, improvements. We saw for uh, some of the languages that we, where we have less users, um, uh, we, we also saw improvements. We just couldn't call them significant just be due to the low, um, low amount of users uh, utilizing that search. Okay. So next, um, understanding query intent. So going back to the example I gave before, uh, the, the term ball, what, what does somebody want when they, when they put in that search term? Here, I'm gonna use a slightly different um, example. So imagine somebody puts in the term uh, food lovers. So they probably don't want things just generally about food or mentioning food, like we're gonna bring pizza to the event. They probably don't want things just about lovers, that probably doesn't apply. They really are interested in foodies and, and people and experiences that are really about enjoying food, right? And so, uh, on the right here, you'll see an example, live foods, virtual game night for music lovers, virtual game night for movie lovers, uh, et cetera. The, this probably isn't serving the need of that search term. Okay. Um, now, here's, here's what we think the person is really after on the right. Something that really has content that's about enjoying food. So words work together to express the idea but the idea can be expressed through various different combinations of words. So um, how, how do we take this and map it, map these search terms to the right content and the right intent? Okay, uh, so what we can do is use uh, information from search, um, from user searches. So uh, when somebody searches, uh, for cycling in, in this example, we can map that search term uh, to the category of the event that they eventually click on um, in the search results. So in this case, uh, there's a list of events shown. They end up clicking this one, Urban Cycling 101 Webinar Watch Party. And we already know that this event maps to uh, the category Outdoors and Adventure in, in our back end, right? So, what we ended up doing is uh, mapping the top uh, 10,000 most frequent search terms to the most often related categories. And in this way, we, we, uh, we improved the search algorithm by utilizing this information and then uh, kind of generating this in an ongoing automated way. So this mapping really um, improves the relevance of search results. Okay, so um, as an example, this is, this is what it looks like what search results look like before we add this capability. So uh, search term is cycling, and here are the first six results without doing this categorization mapping, this intent mapping. And so you can see that in, in red, um, there's these two examples, Urban Cycling 101 Webinar Watch Party and then Sunset Park Picnic Bike Ride, which really do seem to be about cycling. Whereas these other ones, the Dance of Planets, Synodic Cycles, it really doesn't fit. Okay, so now after we apply this, uh, we can see that those two examples in, in, in the previous uh, one uh, slide move to the very top. So th these are definitely higher ranked in the algorithm now. And we also have more uh, examples in the rest of the results that really do seem to match uh, the intent of that search. Okay, so when we did this, what happened? Well, uh, when, we, when we tested this, uh, we found that uh, we had a, an 11% increase in RSVPing from search results, which is quite a good result for us. Um, and we were really happy about that. Okay, next. Um, so I'm gonna talk about some of the upcoming search improvements uh, that we have that we're actually working on today. 
Um, the first is group search. So I just talked about um, event search, uh, but we're also uh, completely redoing our group search functionality and using what we've learned from uh, our recent tests for event search to improve the search relevance for, for group search as well. Uh, we're also working on a lot of user uh, interface improvements and, uh, and specifically we're adding a lot uh, better filtering. Um, and so this is better filtering by search radius and location by time and date. Um, and uh, now that we have uh, a lot of now online events in, in the pandemic era, uh, we're also allowing um, search filtering by online versus in real life events. Um, I can't see all those chats. Okay. Okay. So all this good stuff I just um, I just described with our new search, but when when can you expect to actually see this new improved search experience? So uh, we've been we've been testing this throughout the year um, in various uh, user uh, segments. So we have we currently have partial rollouts um, as we're iterating and further refining these experiences. Uh, currently, um, this experience is available in our new logged out homepage, which is um, currently only rolled out to the English speaking users, um, and. Uh, we've also rolled it out to some of our newly registered members um, using our new logged in homepage experience. And then we, the, the plan is as we're adding these improvements, we'll be rolling uh, this out to all users by Q1 of next year. Right. Um, and I want to leave it with this. Um, we're hiring at Meetup. Uh, our team is growing and we're looking for some amazing uh, some amazing people. We're looking for a data and personalization product manager and a senior machine learning engineer. So um, please reach out uh, to either recruiting at meetup.com or find me on LinkedIn. I think the link is on the event page or somewhere. Um, and uh, let us know if you have referrals or anything like that. Okay. So now we're gonna jump into our Q&A session. Um, let's see. Okay, this is me. I'm here. Okay, uh, all right. So what's our first question? Um, the first question is from M. Fagan. Uh, it, the question is, does Meetup analyze for gaps? For example, where there's demand for groups that do not exist at the moment. So um, we definitely do some of that. Um, that isn't, so you can think of that as being um, somewhat related to search because search definitely tells us uh, a bit about um, user intent and what they're looking for. And we do some analyses internally um, to see whether what the, what users are looking for, whether, whether and to what extent it maps to or, and matches um, the event supply um, that we currently have. So we definitely do some of that. Um, and David asks, uh, what measures will you institute to keep this new search engine current so it doesn't become obsolete like the present engine? Right, um, that's a great question. Uh, like I said, the user intent mapping is automated. So we constantly uh, use um, kind of the click-through information um, to figure out um, and, for, and refine search terms and how they map to our different categories in the back end. So, um, uh, so and, and it's funny because the next question is from Seal who asks, what is mapping? So mapping is really connecting. So uh, if we have a search term like cycling, like I showed before, we want to know that that term uh, maps to a specific category um, of of topics or or uh, topics of interest, right? And so those topics and categories are labeling our groups and events. Now this is what our users input when they create uh, a group. And so really, it's making the connection between those two um, tighter. Um, okay. Uh, Artem asks, uh, how do you categorize queries? Um, I, don't, I don't quite 
I, I think I just described that a little bit. Um, but what's really happening is, uh, like the example I gave before is, uh, someone puts a search term. Um, let's say they put in ball, right? And uh, we show a bunch of events. Um, and some of them are, are about baseball, some are about basketball, some are about ballroom dancing. Um, when, uh, and then let's say that user clicks basketball, right? So uh, we know that, um, that basketball uh, relates to like sports and recreation uh, or sports, let's say, and uh, ballroom dancing relates to arts or something. I'm just giving a, an example. So the more that, the, that people click through with that search term to uh, sports, uh, higher, we higher weight that category for that search term. Um, Lynn asks, uh, what if anything can we do to improve results, people finding us? Um, so one, uh, use search more. Um, use it, uh, it's better now, uh, and utilize it, because uh, the more we use it, the, the more we can um, refine the, the relevance uh, mapping. And uh, I think maybe the spirit of the question is, as an organizer, um, you're putting on an event and you want more people to find your event. Um, I think the clearest um, advice I can give there is to make sure that the title is clearly uh, has some of the words that um, describe what's going to happen in the event. Like what are people going to look for? What, what's the event about? And making sure that there are very clear descriptions in the event text um, is, is another way to do that. So really it's about being clear in how you describe that event and what's going to happen there. Okay, so Cheryl asks, um, would love to see meeting search by city state. Will that be available? Um, so yes. Um, so as I said, we're, we're working on further refining some of the geographic filtering, especially by radius. Um, but you can even today put in um, a, a location and search around that location. But that, that will be um, an, uh, an ongoing thing that we improve. Okay, Shayak asks, uh, do you evaluate these search ranking models offline before deploying them? If so, what kind of offline evaluation do you do? Right, so we certainly do that. Um, we have a number of ways where we evaluate the relevance of search results before we even um, put a new algorithm live to be tested. Um, there is a lot of nuance to that. I didn't really go through it, um, but we do we do that. Okay, Tibor asks, um, do you plan to use keywords in the future for events on the website to help users find content, not just with search? Thank you. So um, to some extent we do that, today um, we call them topics and categories and you you know part of the part of the experience is you can kind of see an overview of groups um, by topic area and category area that um, that's not to say that experience can't be improved and we are definitely thinking about um, how we're going to improve that um, and part of that is um, you know asking event creators to um, uh, put the topic um, of that event um, and connect it to their event as they're creating it. Uh, currently, um, as you know, as an organizer, you could put topics on your group, but not your event. And uh, the problem there is that um, you can have event, an event that's about, uh, you know, a bike ride for a reading group or so, something like that, uh, where, you know, the event is no longer very specific tied to the topic that um, was added when the when the group was created. So there's some nuance there that that we're thinking of improving as well. Okay, Steve asks, um, you briefly mentioned rebuilding using modern infrastructure, Elasticsearch. Can you speak a little more to the architecture or aspects of the rebuild? Um, yeah, I mean, I can I can speak a little bit to that. Uh, I don't want to go into too much detail. It takes a bit of time. Um, so we use Elasticsearch as the search database. Um, we, you know, we have data pipelines feeding into that database um, that are coming uh, off our application databases. 
and uh, we, you know, we use the capabilities in Elasticsearch to make it easier to do our geographic filtering and things like that. Um, and we utilize a lot of the, the abilities to, uh, you know, take a search term, um, convert it into a base term. So like taking off gerunds and uh, things like that. Uh, so you can imagine um, somebody looks for ball or balls, it should really, you know, you take off the S and you process it. Um, but there's a lot of ways that we take that, um, those search terms and, the, and those, uh, those engrams and we convert them um, and pare them down so they can be better matched to our, our uh, inventory. Um, and yeah, I think that's, that's what I have to say about that. Um, all right. Ash asks, what type of technologies do you use to power your new search infrastructure? So we use AWS's hosted Elasticsearch, as I said. Um, and for the most part, that's like uh, the main piece. Uh, we definitely use uh, the data pipelines and we, you know, uh, we use that cloud and, and we transfer our data from our application that's sitting in the cloud to our data lake. Uh, we do transformations. Um, Oh, you know, I don't know. That that's what I have to say about it. Um, Henry asks, there are two types of search challenges, generic and those specific to meetup data and context. Presumably generic challenges are common across all context and will have common solutions. How much of your work is geared toward common search challenges and those that are specific to meetup's data structure and context? That's a great question. Um, so uh, when I described kind of like the early work we did, um, to improve search, uh, that was really using the generic capabilities. And as we think about improving it, we're, we're thinking about the specific ways that, um, that our users would use our search. Um, and it's, it's not quite the same um, as doing a Google search, right? Um, you're not searching all content. It's, uh, for the most part, Meetup, content is super localized, right? Um, definitely before the pandemic, uh, before we kind of uh, enhanced our online uh, event capabilities, it's, it was all, uh, all hyper-localized. And that means ha being able to refine searches very geographically located. So if you think about New York City, um, you know, if you're in Manhattan and you search for an event, you, you might not want to see stuff that's just across the Hudson River in, in New Jersey, right? Uh, because you, you might be in a part of the city where it actually takes a long time to get there. Um, and there are plenty of geographies and cities uh, where, where that's a specific problem. So we certainly think about how, how to solve those meetup specific problems. Um, all right, where are we? Um, M. Fagan asked, does search leverage past events? Maybe my search is a very specific topic that doesn't have a group dedicated to it, but there was a group with a past event on a topic that could maybe have another in the future. Um, so we do, um, I don't really 100% understand that. Um, uh, so you're searching for something and there are no specific events today that will be surfaced but there was be a past event. So I think in that uh, example, you might, um, you might see the group that put on the event, that past event, and not any upcoming events, right? Um, because just, just, like, um, uh, just like meetup events are um, you know, very localized in space, they're also localized in time. And, and you know, when people search for an event, they want it, they usually want an event that day or within the, that week or something. Um, so that's, that's another, um, another piece of that. Uh, let's see, Michael Yablowski wrote, are you going to add more filters to search? Thank Yelp, other group types, online events. Yeah, so I mentioned that. Um, we're working on that today. Uh, so in, in some ways this does exist in the old experience, but um, I guess not as cohesively as we would have liked. Um, so we're working on that today. And, and as I mentioned, these are filters like being better able to refine the radius, the, the, the 
the, the geo geographic extent over which you want to search, um, being able to refine when you want to surface events. So if you're only looking for this evening, you should be able to specify that and only get events that are this evening or next weekend or things like that. Or, you know, I only want um, events over the next week that are in the evening, things like that. And then specifically online events. So not everybody is looking for an online event. Some people are specifically looking for in real life or in person events or vice versa. It's going to depend on where you are and, and how the pandemic is uh, going in that area. Um, but also even post pandemic, you, you know, people will have an opinion on whether they have the time to um, kind of travel to an event or they'd rather um, see it online like this one. Okay. Um, let's see. Do you include time zone in online search? Yeah, so that's a tricky problem, right? An online event happens as a, at a specific time in a specific place that is dictated by a time zone. So let's say it's at 8 a.m. in New Zealand. Uh, you definitely don't want to hop on that event at 8 a.m. in New York because you won't you won't see it. So yes, we do use time zone in online search. Um, let's see, LQBAL asks, are you using a time frame to connect RSTPs with search results? For example, if a search displayed 10 results, user did not RSVP in that moment, but came back a day later and then RSVP, is that counted? What sort of embedding in the, uh, and then I think there's another question. So specifically um, for the query intent um, mapping that I described, these are, um, these are RSVPs that occur to events directly through the search results. So we're not, we're not waiting um, for a day or anything like that, although that's certainly part of the way we analyze some of this stuff. Um, but in that example, it is uh, directly attributed to that search. Um, and then what sort of embedding in the events allows you to count such bookings? I don't quite understand that, um, but I think it is um, understanding that, that user flow. So somebody puts in a search term, they get search results, and um, they really, they click on that search result. We have great tracking data that helps us understand that whole flow and then connect the dots. So we, we, we know that that um, RSVP came from that search result. Okay. All right. Oh, uh, another user uh, wrote, how have you ad adapted search results for COVID times since going to events is not constrained by local geography? Thanks. Right. Um, so again, this is, you know, uh, Meetup has, has done a lot to enhance our online event capabilities. Um, this is something that our users have found extremely useful. We see that because they talk about it. We all talk about it. And we see a lot of usage of them. Um, people RCP to these a lot. Um, so uh, basically in the search results today, we don't discriminate um, between online and in real life events. Um, we treat them the same. Um, now we are adding the filter so that you can discriminate as a user between them. Um, but uh, that's kind of, that's what I have to say there. Um, the other thing is you, you will notice that um, you will see online events that happen uh, slightly outside your geography and that's on purpose uh, because, because online events aren't as tied to a specific location that you have to travel to as an in-person event. We can, you know, a, a user in a, a small town can, that's, you know, 100 miles outside of New York City and they might not travel to New York City to go to an event, they will see online events that are um, hosted by groups in New York City. So, okay. Um, and let me see. Uh, if one Sala asks, uh, when you mention the query intent search, are you implementing some sort of semantic search? And if so, is that by using some features on Elasticsearch or are you using their, your own implementation of that? Um, for the most part, yes, this is semantic mapping of a sort, right? Um, and we, we are using our own implementation to do that. Um, it isn't real time or anything like that. Um, we do, you know, we, we collect the information, we process it, and then we surface it back to uh, the Elasticsearch algorithm. Um, so 
I think the answer is a little bit of both. Um, all right. And Peter M asked, uh, what can organizers do to help users find our groups? If a group has a quirky name that doesn't obviously suggest what it's about, and the organizer hasn't entered any keywords, does that mean it won't turn up for users who search for the group? Or does Meetup have some algorithm that detects what the group is about based on its events? Um, that's a great question. Um, so one, we don't only use the title of the, the name of the group or the title of the group, right? We use the description of the group. We use um, the topics that are attached to the group. Uh, we use a lot of meta information around the group and that includes the events. So we use, you know, if, if someone does a search um, for a specific group name, uh, the, the idea is that that should bring up that specific group, um, uh, whether it's a search for groups or events. Um, uh, the other thing is, um, uh, you know, for an event search, uh, you know, it's gonna be attached to uh, we, we use information about from the event title, the event description, um, and then information about the groups themselves. So we, a lot of that meta information is used in, um, in matching the search term to the, to the, to the events. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, another question from Lynn is does your search accommodate Spanish? We are running events in Spanish and the text our event notices is entirely in Spanish. So today um, we, um, we don't do anything specific for the Spanish language to um, kind of process uh, it, um, process specific Spanish language uh, uh, keywords. Um, what we do rely on is the existing algorithm does a really good job of, uh, and this is part of what I described in the, in the test results for testing different languages. Um, it already does a, a really good job. Um, and there are certainly future improvements we'll add, but right now the new search uh, is miles better than the old search experience in terms of accommodating um, the Spanish language. And th that's mostly because romance languages are structured very similarly to English. And so just the benefits of, of what we're doing for the English language kind of carry over in a large way. Okay, um, I think, uh, let's see, Janine, how much time do we have? can't see anything. Okay, I have time for one more question. Um, okay, um, let's see. Uh, oh, uh, Mark Chandler asks, uh, how can searches reflect the quality of the meetup group, not just the words in the event descriptions? Okay, um, that's a good question. Um, so, you, you know, I think the main intent behind search is to uh, interpret the search terms that are entered in the most, most faithful way and then match them to, um, you know, in this case, the events on Meetup. Um, quality, you know, quality uh, doesn't so much come into that per se um, directly. And, you know, it kind of depends on how we interpret the word quality. Um, if you're, if we're thinking about like, uh, you know, how it gets a lot of really good reviews, um, that's certainly something that'll help it, um, rank higher in some of our recommendations and things like that. But I think search being a very, very intentional thing, um, it's, it's not considered per se today in those algorithms. Okay. All right. So hopefully I answered everyone's questions. Um, uh, all right, let me, let me share again my screen. Hopefully you can see this. Okay, so um, time is up. And uh, um, before you go, if you are interested in becoming a meetup organizer, um, you can use this link here to get 50% off your first subscription. So certainly if you have something you wanna try out, 
and become an organizer, you should do that. Um, I really thank everybody for um, sitting in on this and listening. Um, and thank you so much. Uh, you'll be able to see a recording of this on the blog again at meetup.com slash blog. So thank you. <laughs>